everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We've got, as you can see, a great surprise. This is Jamie from Jamie's Coloring Love. And today I'm, she's very graciously agreed to be interviewed. And I just need to tell you that this is actually our second time around trying. <laughs> because we did the whole thing last week and we call it our pajama party because for her it's close to midnight and for me it's 7.30 a.m. in the morning. So we're both on other ends of the scale and my computer crashed at the end of our little... We had such a lovely chat and I so enjoyed meeting her. <laughs> but um, the computer crashed so... I couldn't, I couldn't recover it, so we're redoing. Hi everyone, this is Jamie from Jamie's Color and Love, and I want to welcome you to this video. I want to thank our lovely Liz at home for interviewing me, I guess, or having a little chat. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and yeah, it should be fun. Cool, okay, so I'm going to start. We've decided to keep it more to the point this week so that we don't exhaust my computer by talking for so long and then making it crash. Okay. Um, did you have any family, friends or teachers that inspired you to try art when you were growing up, when you were a kid? When I was a little kid, um, we had art classes in our elementary school and then in junior high you could take electives and I took an art class as one of my electives because I always really just enjoyed coloring and art and crafts and things like that. So I did that for a little while and then when I went into high school, I actually took drawing classes and art classes and then it just kind of progressed from there. I always really liked it. Maybe it's because I got an A in those courses. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the one course that I felt like I succeeded. But yeah, when I went into like math and English, I was like struggling. So I always loved the arts in general because I was in choir and things like that too. And then after, but there was no like set person that got me into it or anything. Um, after high school and stuff, I took some, I took a college course on art history and I um, did oil painting classes and things like that, but I was older. I wasn't a kid anymore. So I've always kind of just had art in my life. That's fantastic. It's really nice. I was the same at school with music. It was the one thing I succeeded in and so I liked it. It's funny how success just makes you like something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes definitely. you enjoy it. Um, all right, and now this is, kind of a a strange question like what is your favorite type of picture to color and I know we find that hard to answer <laughs> <laughs> well it that's really difficult to answer because I'm an eclectic uh, colorist <laughs> I would like to say the things I don't like to color is I don't like super creepy colorings now I can color a spooky picture but there's like a line where I just can't go any creepier or any scarier because I just can't. I'm kind <laughs> of chicken liver. And so I I pretty much will color anything. Um, I do like to have bright, fun colors. So whatever I do color, I like it to be bright and cheerful and fun because Coloring is supposed to make you happy, and those colors make me feel happy. So that's what I do. Within that, and that wasn't one of the questions I had written down, is there a particular color that's your favorite? My favorite color is yellow. I thought and so. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a funny story because for the longest time, I didn't know what my favorite color was, even through junior high and high school. And even when I got married, I didn't know what my favorite color was only since my adult coloring journey have I discovered that I love yellow the most because I'm prone to that color. I navigate to that color. That color makes me feel good when I look at it. Just reminds me of sunshine and lollipops, you know, <laughs> citrus, uh, clean, you know, things like that. That's why I just like it. Springtime. It's an know. interesting thing, um, color like that, because 
We have favorite colors like that, but is it a color that you would then choose to wear or is it a color you enjoy having around you and using? Um, well, I do have yellow in my house. Okay. <laughs> so like I have couch cushions that are yellow, okay. but I I blended it in with blue so they complement each other. So I basically decorate with yellow. I will not wear yellow just because my skin tone does not look good with yellow. Um, I do have a yellow purse because what you can't wear on your body doesn't mean you can't wear it as a handbag. So <laughs> I do have a yellow purse. Um, and I like to just explore different shades of different things. And I also like mint green as well, but I usually navigate to the yellow if I want the bright, cheery side of things. That's really, you know. that's so interesting, because I, 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 as you were talking about yellow, I was looking at your skin tone and thinking, yeah, you couldn't really wear it. And it's, it's yeah. funny how we can have a color that we really love. Mine is kind of the pinks. I really love them. I can wear pink, but I'm getting old now and I look a bit stupid in pretty girly pinks, you know, so I tend to go for dark, but that was it towards the pink. It's just a color I like anyway. Um, done those questions. Um, yep. It's something nothing to do with coloring, but if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would that be? <laughs> uh, for the longest time, I, I think it's still the same. Um, it's kind of a toss up. I would love to go to Italy just because there's some really beautiful buildings in there that I've learned about in art history. And I think it would just be really awesome and go on the little boats. I think they're called gondolas, yeah. you know, but then I would also really love to go to Scotland because I like all the, not necessarily the buildings, but I like the landscape of all that green and just you know, and I love how they talk over there. I think that's cool too. <laughs> I, I also love Scotland. I've got one of my best friends from school lives in Scotland now and my daughter and I went there a while ago and we were on a tour bus. And I always think Edinburgh is Edinburgh and the guy on the bus said, it's not Edinburgh, it's Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> love it. It's a beautiful country. Um, okay. Do you think there's an age limit when creating art? Absolutely not. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, give a pencil or a crayon to a little tiny child. You can give someone a pencil or crayon that's 101. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, even if they physically can't use their hands, there's other ways to create art. And I've seen it done, and some people are remarkable. I mean, I've seen a lady do a full illustration with her feet, and I could never even do it with my hands. You know what I mean? It's just amazing what some people can do. And I've seen um, a little girl, I think she was special needs. I don't know what she had, but she couldn't control anything from the neck down, and she could draw with her mouth, and it wow. was just incredible. I I like to watch those kind of little documentaries and things like that because it just amazes me that anybody can do it. Mm. Even if all you can do is stick fig figures, that's art. Mm. And and say you don't do art on paper, there's also dance and music and there's many forms of art. So I think that everyone's capable of doing art. Just with that in mind and brings to mind for me with me in the music world you always sort of think that music is only for people that can hear but i went to um a demonstration of a guy that was doing dance with deaf people and they were dancing absolutely fantastically by feeling a beat under their on the floor Yes, through their feet. So as you say, that it's such a wonderful gift art. Um, Just seeing people sign, like sing with sign language, that looks really cool to me too. Mm -hmm. um, so now going back to our coloring, what's your biggest motivation for coloring? Like what is the reason I color? 
pretty much. What makes you feel like colouring, yeah, or what's the reason, whichever way you feel like answering it? Um, well, I colour mainly for a therapeutic standpoint uh, to de-stress and unwind and just try to relax. Um, I do, for my motivation, I'd have to say uh, things that motivate me, like to start a page or something like that, is I'll look at other images of other people's colorings and I think, oh, I haven't colored in my Hannah lens for a while. I should hmm. do that. Or it, just the other day, I watched Sandy from Color Creatively and she was showing her Mean Ju Sons. And I was like, oh, I have one of those. I need to color one of those, you know, and it's it's almost like I get from all these places ideas of, oh, I could do that or I could put that color together and that color together. That would look cool. And then sometimes I'm just so stressed out and anxious from my life that I just need to pull some pens or markers and a mandala and just let color down. And I think that's important as well. So I have both responses there. That's really interesting. I, I, um, I agree with you. When I feel really, really stressed, I find like one of the color questopia color by numbers with just plain markers and just doing what somebody else is telling me and listening to an audio book kind of brings me right back. Now, um, when you were talking about motivation, um, I, I find that coloring in the morning is most motivating. Like uh, if I'm going to start something really detailed, like a Kirby Roseanne's or something, I usually find myself doing that in the morning because I'm mostly motivated in the morning. And then the decompressing coloring happens at night. Ah. I just noticed that in my life. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I can see we've reached the witching hour. It's midnight on your side now. <laughs> dong, dong, dong. <laughs> Cinderella, you're going to lose your shoes. Yes. <laughs> um, I must just mention within that, that we're struggling in this country with power and our power might go off soon. It's fine for the computer and I have a side light, but my lighting might change. So just forgive us with that, but we'll just carry on. Um, which media did you start coloring with? And what would you say? No, I'll ask your next question or you might just move on to it now. <laughs> Open question. Okay, so the first media, I'm just trying to think back just to make sure. And you're not counting like as a kid, you're counting as adult coloring journey? Um, yes, let's go with the adult coloring journey, okay. yes. So my first medium would have to be pencils, colored pencils. But shortly after, I can't even say like a week, I got gel pens. So they were kind of right next to each other. I got my first pack of gel pens pretty quickly after because I just liked coloring with pens. <laughs> Didn't you find gel pens, especially the sparkly ones, absolutely magic when you first got them? <laughs> I do like the glittery ones. Um, that's the ones I tend to keep buying more and more of. But I do like the regular ones as mm. well. Um, the sparkle pop ones are just like being in your face glitter. And I have the dual metallic hybrids, but I feel like those are so hard to get. I keep them like in this precious case that I barely <laughs> use. And then my sparkle pops, it's like, okay, let's use it every single page because I feel like I can get that all the time. Yeah, I need to buy a large set of those uh, gold sparkle pops. Um, I think they sell them in a box because I burn through those pretty fast. <laughs> we have the opposite thing. We get the Pentel dual metallic hybrids easily here and um, the sparkle pops not at all. I have to buy them from Amazon US and import them. Um, so I treasure my sparkle pops. I just think they're magic <laughs> for me. <laughs> opposite. <Yes. laughs> um, I, I really like gel pens. I often feel... Um, 
I used to feel, I can't say I do it all anymore, um, but I went through a stage where I felt like I wasn't good enough if I wasn't doing this fantastic piece of art with pencil shading and blah, 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 blah. Now I actually don't care. I just go ahead and I color what I feel like, the way I feel like, with what I feel like. There you go. Mm -mm. It just, I felt judged. And I think the only person judging me was me. Um, but like about a year after coloring, because they are fantastic colorists. Um, but as you said earlier, any 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 art is art, a stick figure is art. So scribble coloring is also coloring and it can actually look really fantastic sometimes. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're expressing yourself. So. I agree. I mean, even the what we think is the best colorist on YouTube or in the world, even them, they probably have doubts themselves mm. on, oh, this isn't good, this is trash, or this is a scrap one. When us down below, it feels like, it's like, oh, why would you throw that away? It's a masterpiece. <laughs> you know what I mean? So never, never, if they say, what they say is you're your own worst critic. And that's so true. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I will look through pages that I've done in the past and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've grown there. I don't do that anymore, <laughs> you know? But then I have other people that say, I don't see a flaw. And I'm like, you don't, it's right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think we just overanalyze and we like to compare. And I think that's just human nature. And it's not just with coloring with everything in life, mm. like a keep up with the Joneses kind of concept. Mm. So yeah, I think I have that problem. I think we all have struggled with that problem before. Yeah, and I mean, within that, I think both of us from our channel perspective really want to encourage people to just color and enjoy it and don't criticize yourself. Feel the love. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I'm just looking here. Oh, yes. Do you think that anyone, well, I'm looking sideways because I've got this piece of paper. Do you yeah, think okay. that anyone who loves coloring and or art could start a YouTube channel? Yeah, I think anybody who wants to start a YouTube channel could start a YouTube channel. Even if you don't color or are an artist, anyone can start a YouTube channel. If you have a passion about something and you want to share it, you can start a YouTube channel. And what have you found has um being like a positive for you from having your channel um i kind of feel there's a few reasons i like my channel um i like my channel because it kind of feels like a video diary mm -hmm. uh, i know it's not my face but it's my hands and it's my voice so i and i hate to talk about death but if something was to happen to me i i still have my channel and my kids could still look at those videos and hear my voice and see my hands. Mm -hmm. And also video diary wise, I can look back and go, okay, I don't know if I'm the only psychopath that does this, but I go back and watch my completed pages videos from two years ago. And I, I just want to see like, Oh, how much did I accomplish in this month? Well, wow. I did a lot. And, wow, I did a lot of pencils back then, or I was on a watercolor kick, or I was, you know, it yeah. was just interesting to see how much or what changes in your life. And I think that the whole video journaling type of thing is a good thing. And then also one of the reasons why I wanted to do it was because I just wanted to get my voice out there and meet other people that had the same interests as me. because here <laughs> i'm here with my children and there's no one around with the same interest as me and i check my comments i appreciate all of those comments and things and people messaging me because it hurt it feels like a personal note you know it, it means something to me because i feel like there's other people that are doing this this isn't just 
a hobby. Oh, I got a book. I colored in it. Toss it. I mean, it's more than that to me. It is a form of art and it's important to me. Yeah, no, that's lovely. That's really beautiful. I feel the same. I love um, within the YouTube community that there's this, I don't know who first coined the color tube phrase, but I, I like it. And I like that there's this, in my experience, very warm, nice community of people. I often wish that I could spend much longer watching more YouTube videos. There are only so many hours in a day. So, um, you know, you want to watch and support everybody and somehow you can't. Um, but I, I really love it and I've enjoyed, I've loved the sense of community in, in having a channel. Do you find that it takes you a long time to edit and get a video up? Well, <clears throat> at the beginning of my coloring journey, I didn't do much editing because I didn't even really have an, like an editing software. I just used my phone's editor and then I just posted it. But then I got the Power Director app and I put it on my phone and I don't do massive editing, editing like some do. Mm -hmm. And if those people like to do it and have the time, I appreciate it, but I don't have the time. So sometimes I will get a video out and it is unedited. And if you ever see a video and it doesn't say power director on the side, <laughs> I haven't edited that at all. I literally recorded it and posted it. And um, when I do edit things, it's probably just because I needed to do a voiceover or maybe um, I'm adding in some little buddy color clips or something mm -hmm. like that that I needed to add in. But for the most part, I only edit if I absolutely have to because a lot of my videos are pretty much raw. I mean, maybe I just edit it to put my little intro and that's it. Mm -hmm. I just post it. That way you guys can just see it. And I think even sometimes I write unedited or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I if you hear this in the background, you know. I find that, um, and I don't know if it's an age-related thing, but I find that to talk while I'm coloring, my voice gets softer because my brain's doing something else. I often, if I do any sort of color along, I've started voiceovering on them and then kind of vlogging about something else that interests me, not specifically. I sometimes do a color along of this as the color I'm using, but I don't feel at this stage of my journey that my pieces are so beautiful that anybody's really going to want to do the same as me. So if I'm doing um, like a technique video, I try to talk as I'm doing it. And I find it really difficult. I find it much easier to color or do something and then voice over that my brain can focus on one thing at a time. I don't know if you saw that, but our light went out. Yeah, I saw it. Do you see you the good? flicker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having such an oh, issue. It's in your house. <laughs> I'm always happy because at least now I've got my hot water in a flask so I can still have tea for the next three hours. <laughs> There you go. Mm, it's just cold and then there's no heating or anything. So, Oh, man. Yeah, it's a bundle the, up. Yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask about, do you print your PDF books on any specific paper? Do you have like a favorite paper that you print on uh, or for different media? Well, I'm trying to find my perfect paper still. I'll tell you that first. Mm. But um, I do print off on Walmart cardstock, which is the pen and gear cardstock that is 110 pounds. And it's very, very smooth. It doesn't really have texture to it. And then I also got the Nina cardstock off of Amazon because you can put like a chunk of that paper in your printer. You don't have to feed them in individually and it will just print off those. And that has a lot more texture to it. It's not my favorite for markers. I mean, it does okay, but I, I'm not in love with it. I got it because I saw it on 
Sarah Renee Clark's channel and she recommended it for printers. I think overall I need to get a laser printer because I have an inkjet printer because I know no matter what paper you put in there, the ink is just floating on the surface. Mm. And so by doing that, uh, if you use your markers and you touch that line, it can bleed out into your work yeah. and create that muddy mm. look. And so it's it's one of those bittersweet type of things. And I have colored on regular copy paper and I find it hurts my hands if I do that. Yeah. I can do it, but I prefer not to. Mm -hmm. I've tried Nina, um, I think it was called Nina Super White or something like that. It was recommended for markers on a kit and cloud, a kit and cloud a class. Can't say that. You're okay. Um, but it's, it's quite expensive. Again, it's imported. So I've found one or two papers here. I found a, for markers, um, it's an HP, I think it's actually meant for color printing. And so I don't know if it's got some, it's very smooth. So I don't know if it's got some sort of um, thing on top, that treatment on top. But I find my markers work very nicely on that. But I can't find my favorite color pencil paper either. I've tried one recommended by Coloring Bliss. But for me, that paper is too textured. Um, yes. And I find my printing, I have to take it to a print shop because my printing flakes off. I've got a laser printer, but the little printed bits flake off. So. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, it doesn't. If I take it to a print shop, you know, with one of the heavy duty printers, then it prints nicely on there. But it's also just too textured. So you've got to either do an undercoat with soft pastels or by the way i don't know if you watched sandy's class on or, or video on soft pastels with water but i tried that and that was fun have you ever tried that i haven't tried that it, you're talking about the chalk chalk yes. type? yeah i haven't tried that before it was interesting i i tried it just on one but using water with soft pastels so that's just an aside it just popped into my head sure, um, okay. uh, do you ever do watercolor do you ever print um like you you showed some very nice watercolors the other day and i loved the picture that you did with them i really thought that was gorgeous have you ever printed a picture on watercolor paper and then used watercolors on that um, I haven't just because of the fact that I have the ink jet mm. because as soon as that water is going to hit the ink, it's going to it's going to just be a disaster. Mm. But if I have um, printed paper like at the copy store, mm. they'll just put it on their cardstock, okay. and I don't know what they use, but I've used my ink tense pencils on their cardstock, and it seems to do just fine. Uh. But it's not like watercolor paper. Now I have watercolor sketchbooks and I have watercolored in those. There's no images on them just to mm. play with watercolors. And um, cold press versus hot press. I like the smoother one, whichever that That's one is. That's hot press. Hot press. Yeah, I prefer, I prefer the hot press because I don't like texture very much to my mm. paper. I like my paper to feel smooth after I'm done. Mm. And when a uh, paper is really textured, it kind of feels like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> to me <laughs> at certain points. But I know that um, when you put gesso on your page, it, it feels like that as well. Because mm. I used to do that. Now I don't do that anymore. I've yet to try the satin glazing. Liquid. I've just tried that and I've... Um... I did one that wasn't successful and then I did another one where I used um, like a credit card and went over the page after I'd, I put the, uh, the satin glaze on with a very soft brush. Somebody, I can't remember who, on YouTube recommended that because before I'd used a sponge applicator and okay. then I used the credit card and I it like almost took all of the stuff off. I mean, but um that page and it's thin amazon paper um 
actually was so nice to use the water-based marker on. Um, was it's it, a fascinating it, feeling. Was it gritty like you do with gesso? Not like before, um, but it was gritty the previous time before I used that credit card. So I'm going to try that again <laughs> and see if it was maybe because with that particular page, I'd first I'd first used um, I used gel crayons dry on the background yes. to show people how to do that. And then I wanted to use water based markers on the picture because I actually wanted it just to be finished. And um, so I sprayed it with workable fixative first because I thought if I put the satin glazing liquid on top of the gel crayons, that's all going to run. So yeah. I used the workable fixative and then that dried and then I used the glazing liquid. So it was like a mix of chemicals. <laughs> totally a mixed media effort, it sounds like. Yes. I remember um, the first time I used gesso, um, I just did it on a cheap page that was like thinner than copy paper, it felt like. And I used these really cheap water-based markers that I got at the supermarket. I think they were Mayped. Yes. markers or something yes. like that and if you color with those just normal they pull up your paper and they're scratchy mm -hmm. and stuff like that but i did it on top of the gessoed page and they just flowed like butter and i was like okay and then i used the tombos and the tombow dual brush pens on a pre-treated page and those just love that kind of stuff mm -hmm and you can pull a page together really fast hmm. when it's been pre-treated like that. That's why I've been doing that lately because I I've, I haven't had much time. So it's, it's, and it's actually a really nice feeling with a water-based marker on the gesso. So the way, the way, as you say, like butter, it just does its thing, yeah. And if you wanna blend two markers together, you have plenty of time to do that. Hmm because they just want to wash together. It, mm -hmm. it, it's nice. All right, so now we're nearly finished. Is there anything you'd like to tell us? Would you like to tell us about your children or anything else that you'd like to share about yourself? I guess, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty much an open book in the world, in the world of coloring. Um, I'm happy to, if you see something on my channel that you've never seen before, you know, like, hey, Jamie, can you show me how to do that? I'm happy to share. I mean, I'm not a professional artist or anything like that. I've just learned some tricks along the way, and I'm happy to share the tricks with you and everybody out there. And I, I just love to just relax and color and basically create magic on paper. And it's it's a lot of fun. And some days, like right now, I'm going through a little bit of a slump or a lull, so to speak. I haven't colored since June. And um, I think it's just because I've been experiencing hand pain and um, I'm trying different methods to try to get rid of the hand pain. And if not, maybe we'll just be watercoloring in the month of July. But yeah, I... I just kind of go through moments where I'm like eager and I have to color. I get that antsy feeling and then I just go full throttle. And then other times I just need to back off and just give it a break and then come back. I still am exercising my creative juices and probably buying too many coloring books for comfort, but you know, I will always come back to art and that's how it's been my whole life. Even if I have to take a break, I always come back. Uh, I found it so interesting chatting to you, Jamie, and I, I'd really like to thank you so much for being prepared to come on the channel and share a little bit about yourself and your life and your art. And I've really loved it. And I would just like to say thank you to everybody for watching and for joining us and for commenting please <laughs> we just both of us love the comments it's it makes you feel as if you're not alone in this great big scary world <laughs> so thank you very much and thanks for watching bye-bye now from me
Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching.